Hi everyone, this is Dave, and now I'm going to walk through the Legacy UAP, show you how to use it and different ways to use it quickly uh, to be able to generate what you want to generate. This won't be exhaustive, but it'll be enough to set you free, and you'll see where you're going from there. One thing I need to do before I continue is this. For those of you who are still sticking with me and continuing, uh, I did mention that there were two things to do inside your cPanel, and I showed you one of them. It was the Let's Encrypt SSL, right? That's where we said what? We said make sure to create one for the asterisk dot, whatever your website is, you issue it. And that's going to ask how you want to bind it. You're going to say the DNS selection that you see. And you'll continue with a DNS selection and do not do a dry run, do the regular issue. Okay. That gives you this thing that's up here. Okay. And then these things just expire and refresh all the time. No problem. They do it on their own. You don't even need to be involved. Uh, so yeah, that's what allows you every single page of your entire website on all the subdomains, all the inner pages everywhere is HTTPS, every single page, okay? Huge, huge, huge value. What beats generating a million unsecured pages <laughs> or 10,000? Generating 10,000 secured pages. Not just one good secured page, not two, not five, but 10,000, right? That's huge. Maximize every benefit you get. What's better than having one page that's HTML validated? All the pages. And then generate variations of those. All of them are HTML validated. This is a really quick way to saturate the market with betterment, right? Your websites will tend to be better than your competition automatically. What's better than generating a few pages that have good page speed? Generating thousands of pages that have good page speed for as many things as you want to promote for yourself and others as you can. What's better than just having backlinks? Having backlinks from related websites that are unique, right? And yet they all backlink you, okay? So I'm going to show you through that. But before I do, <laughs> this is the other thing I owe you. What is the other thing we have to do in this panel <laughs> besides this? The answer is optimize your website. See that? That has a lot to do with helping your page speed. Now, your page speed is not governed by this, but it's helped along by this. So we had to do a lot inside the panels to get them as good as possible. Optimizing the website is the rest. It's disabled by default. You're going to switch it to compress all content and hit update. It'll just take a moment. Okay, then when it's done, it's done. Second point I want to make. When, if a lot of people are purchasing near the same time and they're all using Let's Encrypt and they're using the bind method, then you may get a flag that says, hey, you got to wait a while before you can do this. All right, fine. Just come back later. Do it later. Okay, just do it whenever you can do it. Give it a crack every so often. Usually, if you can't do it, wait a couple of hours, try again. You probably can. Okay, sooner or later, it'll be done. And then once it's done, it's done. You're good to go. Most of you won't run into that problem, but just in case you do, just letting you know, there's like a max number of times that can be used within any given uh, couple of hours um, at one time. So just letting you know. That way you're not confused, right? So when you first buy this thing, like I said, when you first buy it, okay, you won't be able to log into it right away. Give it about 10 minutes or so because it, it, this SSL can't move as fast as the installation to secure it, okay? So you'll just, you know, walk off, have some coffee or something, take some lunch, then come back and play with it. Then you'll be good to go. All right. So anyway, we have no sitemap here. Let me get back to this, right? I'm going to quit talking about all of these things. We've already discussed this. We've already discussed that. Um, we are here, aren't we? We're on the inside of the administrator panel. So I'm going to close everything else. Boom. Okay. So while I'm here, first thing I'm going to point out. This looks like a broken link. Why? Because we did not put a logo there. Global settings, general settings, has some basic, basic settings. This, ignore. Don't even bother with this. We never did actually do anything with it. We frankly should take this out. Okay. But down here, am an email. That is the email in case you forgot your password, right? This isn't the one used for the contact form. This is for you for if you forgot your password to log into here. Now, it could be the same email address as for your contact form. 
right? If you're going to use a contact form, you can enable the contact form or not, right? Um, but there you go. It's a, it's just there in case your administrator email, like your webmaster email, is going to be different than your actual contact email address, right? That you want for regular business use. Okay. Like forgot at your website dot net or com or whatever. All right. Website title. This is the name you would give your website. If my domain name is wi5 uh, wiblitz5.com. The website title might be Web Installer Blitz number five, right? Or WI Blitz five, okay? So that would be the purpose of the website title. Favicon, you know what the favicons are, right? You can, you can choose from, if you hit browse on any browse button anywhere, there's folders that have subfolders that have some stuff in them. And like the images folder has lots of sections some of which have very few things in them right now. Uh, some have none. Don't worry about AI cache, it's totally different. But then things like banners, you know how we were showing you some of those banners, you recognize that one that's green here with the tracks running through it, right? Recognize this one with the arrow that went down and back up again. All of these mainstream banners are basically replaceable, okay? So you could use any one of these in any combination to be your banners. You just double click them when you hit the right browse button inside the panel so it updates that spot where that browse button is, okay? Then you can save your changes. Don't forget to save your changes, right? That's pretty easy. So there are things all through here. Bullets, we just have one really, but we gave it different names for different links, okay? Call now, we've got quite a few options for call now buttons, right? Um, so as you go through these, you're just going to see, you know, different things you can work with. And that's kind of cool. Okay. Um, just stuff you can use. Okay. Just helps speed you up. Now, all these images are optimized, so they're all helping your page speed for sure. Okay. Now, real quick, website, favicon icon, by the way, that updates this tiny little guy up here. Usually those are small, but often if you use a whole website logo and you just link to the same logo as your website logo, then it'll just show up tiny up here anyway, okay? Guys usually do favicon icons when they want. It's like a 20 by, or 16 by 16 PNG transparent. That's the best version for a favicon, okay? Website logo is your logo, right? We didn't put a logo here because which logo should we put? If we put a logo, it would show up here instead of this, okay? And by the way, this is clickable. Anytime you want, it'll open the front page in a new tab. That way you can see where you're at with your work. You can always check where you're at by just simply hitting that. Okay, what now? Meta tags. How many of you guys know you need something like a Google site verification tag if you want to add Google Analytics or some, well, not Google Analytics so much, but Google Webmasters for submitting sitemaps manually? If you want to do that, you don't need to, but you can. So this is to put tags into the header of every page in your website. It's universal, okay? So if you put a meta tag here, it canvases every page of the website. This is script code at the page bottom. This is like visitor tracking code, standard analytics code, uh, usually like live chat support code. Sometimes you get code where you got to put something in the body and something in the head. Okay. No matter what you do, hit update general settings when you're done with it. Okay. That way you can save your changes. Copyright text, obviously, is the text to the bottom of the website. Copyright, C symbol, and it's using my website title token. That's a token. I'll talk about tokens in a minute for anyone who doesn't know what they are. And it's got just whatever I want, for years, rights, and it's got a link to a sitemap, which is probably just slash sitemap.html, of course, and that's what it is. If ever you need to see the source of any box in here, just flip to it. Sometimes when you're trying to manipulate and you've got a lot of uh, coding in the source, click in the box, hit Control A for Control All, right? Let me just show you this way. Okay, I brought up a notepad text. That way, Control A, Control C, then Control V is in Victor. And that way, I can make any edits or check anything I want in here. Sure enough, my sitemap 
is a relative URL, which frankly I like, and you will too. It's a really good idea. This doesn't have to be the space symbol. It, it's there. It could just be like that. But I'm just showing you, you can make edits, okay? And then you can take this, copy it, right? And remember to paste over everything. So Control A and then Control V as in Victor to paste. If I had somebody ask, why can't you do Control P? Most people know uh, by now, Control P is to print. So V as in Victor is to paste. It's right next to the C, right? Control C, Control V. All right. Having said that, you could flip this back off or not. It's up to you. And then just hit update. Okay. Canonical URLs. We all like canonical URLs. They help us rank better. Do you want them to include www dot or not? The answer is usually no. We're going to go with subdomains. You don't want them doubled up with www dot. That's pretty ridiculous. So just always leave that no. Okay. You could make it yes, but you probably don't want to leave it no. Uh, however, if you're exporting a site for a guy and there's a reason he wants www dot, just make it yes uh, and then save the change and then you can export the project when you're ready to the guy and then come back and just switch it back to now. <laughs> can crawler index, that means is Google allowed to see the pages I make? Okay, theoretically, I would not Google, would not want Google seeing any of this, okay? but it's generic content that's gonna work for like 50 million pages per template out there because the use is so clearly, um, there's so many ways to use this material. Changing fonts means something new. Changing images means something new. Changing colors means something new. Changing my list of keywords means something new. Changing the background color of these buttons means something new. The more changes you make from one website to another, the greater the variation, the more Google likes it. But mostly it's just content and we have so many variables it's worthy of trillions of combinations that, you know, of which like 50 million are worth taking <laughs> per main template, right? Then that's just amazing. So I don't really care. I leave it on yes, why? Because when all you guys install this, anytime somebody approached me and said, Dave, my pages aren't ranking, why? It turns out that's why. Because when we log in and take a look, it was set to no. So all their pages were telling Google, hey, I'm in development mode. Do not index these pages on Google because they're not ready yet. Okay. So I just leave it on yes <laughs> and hit update. Okay. Now that I've gone through that, I will say this. Do not worry about this. This, If I don't talk about it, we probably don't use it. Not this way. We have our own backup and export functions, but we do it differently than this. Okay. Anytime you make changes, just don't forget to either hit the button at the top, the button at the bottom, or on some of these longer pages, you've got a button on the side you can hit. By the way, let me cover a couple of things real quick. I said this is a token. That's because it starts with the bracket percentage sign. And then everything here is capitalized letters and or numbers. Then I've got the percentage sign closing bracket. Ooh, don't want to do that. There we go. All right, that's called a token because it has that format. This is a certain token that's pretty unique. It says webmaster. It's got to have one purpose, right? Admin email. Website title is website title. But apparently it has more than one purpose because, hey, we're using it down here, right? Sure, because we want it to show up in verbiage on the site, okay? If I look on the site to see what that looks like down here in the footer, it says copyright theme to html.com. That's my website title, which for the main pages is theme to html.com. So if you're wondering how did the word change, it changed this way. There is a place called global variables. As a matter of fact, I'll just show you here right now. See this? Right here. If I click it, sooner or later it opens up. And it shows me all the global variables that we have in our system. I think I have to enable flash like up here uh, to allow flash to run. Uh, doesn't really matter because we actually deal with our global variables somewhere else. Come. Okay. Uh, okay. And then that way, let me just see if this works. I think it does. Just kind of showing you through something you can do. You can flip that thing to ask you, you know, when it goes to enable flash. 
so you can say yes enable me please but it it's not coming to it okay never mind because again it doesn't really matter you can hit these anyway so see these are all these different tokens that we have brand name and i got a brand name legacy uap i've got address line one address line two that's alo alt and i've got values okay so global variables have three things to them a title that I myself can read. It's just lettering, numbering, whatever I want it to be. Usually I match it to whatever I put inside the token. ALO, therefore the code would be ALO inside the brackets and the percentage signs, right? ALT, there it is. What are the rules for these tokens? No spaces, no symbols, all capital letters or numbers. In any combination so you can do letters and numbers like you see here okay no problem you can do variable 123 you know 123 variable 125 128 they don't have to be in order all they have to be is unique to that particular uh, usage that you want okay all right let me close that back up okay so let me just start walking through the rest of it and I'll say this when you look at the front page of the website, it's different than all the other pages of the website. Here's how. This right here, from this part to here, is considered the home page. In other words, the page. It's the content that makes the page what it is, the home page. This is not the home page. This is the sidebar. Okay, You can flip it on or off page by page and you can decide which items display in it page by page okay this is not part of the home page it's a different element these are like about us boxes uh, boxes service boxes they are different functional things this is not the home page either it's a banner okay uh, and banner text banner buttons okay so there you go down here this is not the home page either it's a footer so the footer will remain on all the pages and most of the rest of this stuff will disappear on all the pages uh, on the inside. Like if I go inside, what do you see? You see the footer. You see nothing at the top. This is the page. Okay. And then this is the sidebar which we enabled on that page. Okay. With those items enabled on the page. Okay. So when we talk about pages, that's pages and if you go to pages you've got home moji review you know whatever we called our pages and whatever links we gave our page names and yes you can hit any one of these arrows to open any one of these up in a new tab so if i want to open that one just to see it i can do it just like that okay so that's cool you can enable and disable pages which will take them out of the menu out of the sidebars you won't be able to find them on the website you just disable it okay then it's not there in the list. You can still visit it yourself. You can still make edits to it or whatever, um, but nobody else will be able to find the page, okay? Because it's disabled. They would have to know the link, okay? You can flip it back on, okay? You could spin the content, but this is kind of a cheap way to go and you'd have to get your own spin uh, rewriter code for it and it's not really a good idea. But, and besides, you don't need to do it for the UAP anyway, because <laughs> that's already done. Uh, it's tier two content, and that's already done. Okay. You can delete pages. You can duplicate pages if you want to create another page just like one of your other ones, and then go in and edit it. Okay. So another thing you can do is sort the pages. Say you don't want them to show up in the menu the same way. Just grab one anywhere in the middle and drag it up and save the sorting. And boom, you just did. You resorted it. So it resorted in the menu. It resorted in the list. Review Pro Toolbar Reviews Affiliate. Review Pro Toolbar Reviews Affiliate. Well, wherever it is. Uh, perform uh, Review Reviews Pro Toolbar Affiliate. Yeah, that matters mainly in the top menu when you have it enabled. I'll show you later. But having said that, uh, you go into any page to edit it. And when you edit it, you've got choices. Home page with a menu link, 
Or if you want to make a page, but you, you've got so many pages and you don't want it to show up in the menu link, you make a page without a menu link. That way you just link to it somewhere in the page content or in the sidebar or whatever. Okay? Or an external page link actually leaves the website altogether. The page URL here, that would be HTTP colon slash slash. So you might, and, and this will show up in your menu. So you can have this at the end of your menu and it could be like blog and it, it will go to your blog or forms and it goes to wherever your forms are, you know, what, it, what off site. Okay. And you will not be showing sidebar widgets or anything on the page by default because obviously you're leaving the website when you click that link. Okay. So if I just come back to normal, okay, the menu name is home, right? That's what we're calling it. So in the menu, uh, it's called home. I did not choose it as a popular page, so that's why I'm not seeing it there. Um, parent page and why? Because I didn't want to put so much uh, link juice into the home page. It's already getting plenty. I want to divide it across the rest of the pages more evenly. Okay. Then um, you decide what parent page. You can make submenus. So you can make a new page and have the parent be one of these pages so it shows up in a drop-down menu for that section. That's great when you have a page for services or products, then you have a bunch of products in that section or services, okay? And you can give your names to your URLs. Obviously, the home page is called index. You cannot change it. Now, see the .html? That means you don't need to put it here. You don't have to say index.html for the main page. You just say index. It realizes .html by itself. That saves you the typing. All right. Do you want to show the sidebar? Yes or no? Yeah, we do. And if so, which widgets do you want to show? Well, you've got a choice of three widgets or all, right? So we're probably showing all anyway on the main page. Popular services, satisfaction, credit cards, right? Popular services, satisfaction, credit cards. Yeah, that's all. Okay. Now, down here is exactly the page stuff, but this is the variable. See how many tokens? I told you there are 400 and, uh, what, 98 or 48 tokens, 448 tokens. It's just tokenized. Everything here is tokens, 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 tokens. So if you had like an average of three choices for each token, then it's three raised to the 448 total combinations of what can be written obviously trillions of web pages of which google's going to say yes to many millions okay and so this is all done for you can you add tokens of your own can you update tokens yeah it says you'll feel whatever it is for us let's see what that says on the home page because i'm curious there's a home page it's the bottom it says you'll feel great about recommending us Okay, I just know that's what that means. You'll feel probably great about recommending and then the word us, right? What if I want to say the company name? Um, it could just be you'll feel great about recommending and I happen to know company, right, is one of the global variables. So if I save that change, I can either update and reload so I stay on the page or just update so I go back to my list of pages. It doesn't really matter which one you choose, but if I'm not really sure if I'm done on this page yet, I'll hit update and reload. Okay, it updated it. So I'm gonna come back here and refresh to see what it did. Remember, that's what we changed was right down here. Yep, <clears throat> you'll feel great about recommending. <laughs> Whatever the name of the company is, <laughs> Acme Backlinks, I did for this example, right? So, will you normally mess with these variables? No, not really. You might make a couple of slight changes here and there for the fun of it, just because when you're reading it, you might just decide you want to play with it a bit to make it more interesting or do something new. You can, but you will probably, most of you, won't touch anything here except maybe to change the image. How do you change the image? You double click it. That opens up where you can browse the server and grab any image you want. 
happen to have that one there, right? And again, you can look through your boxes for the kind of image that you would like. Keep in mind, banners are usually really, really big, right? So, But I might have something else. I might want somebody to call us instead. If I did that, it'll switch. So how do I make that work? Well, I do something, I, I can change the width and the height, right? We've even got our lock to flip it on and off to make it exactly the way we want. And we can reset the size. So if I went like 100 by 100, see how it changes them together because my lock was on? But I could go 100 by 150 with the lock off to get a different effect. It's up to me. But if I think, wait a minute, where was I? I lost track. I can just hit this to reset. And then I know where I am. And I can choose to relock. Border puts a border around the image. Horizontal space, that's when you have an image within a bunch of text and you want the image uh, to not touch the words on the sides or touch the words above and below. So you might use like 15 pixels horizontally and 15 pixels vertically and that will keep at least some border around the image in such a way that it doesn't run into the text. Now alignment, you can say I want it set to on the left side of all my print or on the right side of all my print. And since you have your border either way, it will still look good with the print going around one way or the other. Okay, That's how I would normally do that. Now reality check is I don't really want to do that. Yeah, I want to close the dialog window. I don't want to change it. So it's just this, right? If I did change it, don't forget to hit one of the blue buttons to accept the change. Okay, browser title for the page. That's awesome. That's exactly all the print that goes up here. That's the browser title. This is what Google looks at to form the blueprint that you can click on. Then comes meta keywords. There are a bunch. Then comes meta description and it physically says something in a couple of sentences. That's reasonable. And that way when you produce thousands of pages, that's going to be thousands of combinations all related to whatever it is you want. If you did have coding to put into the header or the body that's specific to that page only, okay, only for the home page, I can put that coding in the header. I can put coding in the body before the unbody tag. It'll show up, okay, uh, and I can update. Now, these do not replace the universal codes. Universal codes will show up on all the pages because they're universal. But these are page specific. They get added in for only the page you make the changes to. So if you had a contact us page and you wanted to put a call script in the body tag just on the contact us page so that that live call only shows up if someone clicks contact us, you can do that. Okay, and that's really, really useful. If you want to put visitor tracking on only a certain page, and then you want to put a different visitor tracking code on a different page, you can do that. That way you can allow different clients to see the, the visitors to their pages or some such thing. Those could be variables like anything else. You could create tracking code, you know, and just give it a name and make that a variable. And we're going to add it to our global variables and we're gonna use it as a variable, okay? Just update and then make sure to add it in your global variables in the right place. I'll show you how to do that soon. So let me take that out because I really don't wanna make changes to this. I'm just showing you around, okay? Let's take a faster look through the rest of everything. So far, what do we cover? I was talking about how all this stuff is different than the actual page, right? We were talking about the pages. Here's where the, the front page really is. See global settings? When we went there last, what do we do? We went to general settings and we explored some basic top end settings, just basic settings for the website, right? Now let's go to theme settings. Theme settings works top down from the very top of the website to the bottom of the website. Again, ignore this bit at the top, but do you want the body layout? Do you want that to be a fluid layout or box layout? That determines whether the whole website goes all the way across the screen or if it sits inside a box. Yeah, that's just a switch. You can switch it. Do you want to enable the sidebar? 
Should it be able to show up at all? Yeah. Do you want it to show up on the left or the right side of the page? Right? That's exactly what that's for. Left or right or even horizontally if you want to make it a whole new section that takes up a chunk of area and it'll be down here somewhere. Uh, all unto itself. Its own element will get added that way. Okay. Most of the time we don't do it. It's hard to make it look really good. So we just go left or right with the sidebar usually. Okay. Now there's a functional difference. If you go left with the sidebar, then on a mobile phone, when you scroll down, you start seeing the sidebar items before you see the body text of the page, the main page content. But if you put the sidebar on the right, then you see the page content before you see the sidebar. Which do you choose is totally up to you. If you want to put some things in the sidebar like an introduction video and you want to stick it at the top, then you might just do that. And if you do that, you might want the sidebar to show up left so that when somebody lands on their mobile phone, they start to scroll down, they see your intro video right away. Or maybe you rearrange your sidebar items, you resort them to get your Facebook uh, likes campaign at the top, you know, or whatever it is you want to do. Okay, Google Translator settings. This is for a translator bar. Do you want it on or off? And if you want it on, do you want it left, center, or right? You can play with these options, see how they act. It's very, very simple and fast to learn these. See the blue button over here? Nicely, since it's a really long page, you can just hit this to update, okay? Header settings. Well, that's for being able to see like the company name, serving greater, city, long state, or short state. I've got LS and SS for that. Call us at the phone number, whatever it is, okay? Do we want to enable the SMS section or not? That's inside the header, right? That's for the whole or click to text, click to text, and the SMS button. If we don't want that enabled, we flip that off, okay? If we want it enabled, we get to choose exactly what we want the buttons to say and what it should say, okay? It's totally up to us, okay? Navigation settings. Enable navigation, yes or no? That's to get the menu at the top of the page. Should it be left, center, or right aligned? You know, up to you. Play with the settings and you'll see how they affect everything. Breadcrumb. You guys know the breadcrumb, right? Home page, little carrot to the page you're on, little carrot to the submenu page, and you can click through it. That's a breadcrumb. You can flip it on or off. Uh, banner slider, right? That's exactly our banner. We've got a slide delay time. How long does it stay on the first slide in seconds before it continues to the second slide? How long does it stay there in seconds before it goes to the third? Well, I wanted seven seconds for the first, seven seconds for the second, and then I want it to sit here for five minutes. That's 300 seconds. So that people get the idea that they should click the link now, the show's over, right? If they just walk away, then yeah, eventually it'll start back over again. 77300, 77300, okay? Now, can you do a part of a second? Yeah, we've got a background video here. If I were to br whoops, browse for that, I could go here and put that in there and update that. And if I do that, come back and take a look, okay? Go to the top. I get my looping video. Thing is, my background image still shows because the video can't stretch. Okay, it just, it's a sample video, right? So it would look better in box layout view. So I might switch to box layout and I might say, yeah, uh, turn on the Google Translate bar. I might say enable the header. Look at how fast this is gonna make a huge difference to the way this acts. Uh, I might left center or center, you know, my menu. Um, and I'm just gonna go ahead and update, okay? And come back and flip it again okay now that looks kind of a little funky there are a couple of other simple choices I have to make real quick that'll finish changing the way this displays namely I have to make a change to typography to force the file to update okay typography is guess what all the color settings for the page so I want to make this point theme settings and typography go hand in hand to walk from the very top of the website to the very bottom of the website, 
for all the sections, I want to enable or disable at any point in time. And every color, every font family, every font color, what's italicized, um, background colors, images, everything for the front page is governed between theme settings and theme typography. And take a look. Body style this is just the main body stuff. Look at how many options you have. And yeah, there are just hundreds and hundreds of fonts. And you can choose the size of the font in every case, whether it's bolded, whether it's italicized, and you can change the color, infinite number of colors. And in many cases for colors, you might even want to go, guess what? There's a word, transparent. And when you switch to transparent and update, literally that thing will become transparent and you will not see it. Now that will not make sense for a heading one color, but it makes sense for some things like shadows or borders. It makes sense for um, like on the banner, if you don't want to have any opacity in the background, you can choose the opacity of the background. What's that mean? That means this. The, this right here is set to an opacity of 0.7. That's why you can still see clouds through it. Okay. You can flip that on or off. Well, you can change it up or down. You can go anywhere from, you know, 0.1 to a, uh, 1.0. Okay. Now what? You got font, color, font. So like buttons and background colors, you can make those transparent if in some cases you want to get rid of the background color altogether. Okay. So you have infinite control, services section, then comes the about section. You can enable parallax for background images, okay, which you can start left top, bottom, middle, right top, bottom, middle, center top, bottom or middle, and whether the image repeats or not to form tiled effects. You know, it's totally up to you. All right, logo section, sidebar, all of the sidebar settings. So you can theme your sidebar differently than the main body so that it stands out better. It looks more alive, more like a layer, which is cool, okay? And again, you can even have parallax on a background image for your sidebar background. Isn't that wild? You can literally choose everything, every color, every font, just drag your balls, right? You can even just copy something. If you're like, I like that color and I wanna copy it and I wanna paste it here, you know, you can do that. It, and it doesn't matter if you don't see it right away uh, because you will, <laughs> once we update the theme and come back and check, you'll see the changes. Okay. Map section. Again, you can flip on and off and change colors and everything. This is unlimited variability, so to speak. Pre-footer section, footer section, back to the top button. Even that, think about it in case you hadn't before. This has four color settings. The color of the arrow, the color of the ball, there could even be a border color. That would be three. And then when you hover over it, the color of the arrow on hover over. Do you want it to change or stay the same? The color of the ball, and if applicable, the color of the uh, border. <laughs> so that would be like six different set points. Well, we just have four. Background color, icon color. Background color, icon color. Now. Having said that, if you do have custom styles, for those of you who are advanced enough to create your own, you can paste that in here. Create your own styling. And you can hit up, update right there and save all the changes to the entire page. Okay. Again, don't bother with this. There's another way to do it. That's better. Okay. Now, what if you make a bunch of changes like I did and you don't want to save them? Just click off. Don't click off here and here because this is still the same thing. Click totally off. Okay. Then come back, global settings, okay? Then you're free to meander. All right, now you're starting to get it. General settings, theme settings, theme style and typography, those are huge. They cover 99% of the whole look of your front page. Matter of fact, I did not make a change to the typography. I'm gonna make one right now really fast. Uh, in the banner, we had the banner go all the way to the bottom of the page, right? What if I don't want that to happen? I can change it to a smaller number and update. I'll do that much right now. Now when I do it, there is something that will look really strange to you the first time you see it, and it might confuse you. Don't be confused. It, and again, look at how this page looks. It's going to look different in a moment. When I refresh it, 
because I changed something on the typography page, has to update some files. So it's gonna look weird, like this, coding. And you're gonna be like, oh my God, is this what everybody sees when they come to my page? No, it's just one time period. Like the time you clicked it right now was that time. So once I refresh it, perfectly fine. And not only perfectly fine, check it out. It's doing rounded corners. There's some room up here with a drop shadow, which you can adjust. The background color, you can adjust. Uh, the, the print is got margins the way it should. Everything looks great. All I had to do was reset typography, flipping from fixed layout to box layout, right? Okay, now, the next thing you guys, uh, the, let me just do the rest of this really fast. You'll start to see it because I think by now you get the point. Sidebars. If I go in here, I can create sidebars. I can add a new widget and it'll give me choices. What kind do you want? Do you want a menu widget, ads widget, video widget, embed code, content, contact form, Google map, or social links? Explore them. You'll see how they operate. They're all cool. And you can give them a name. Like, um, uh, we serve your area. And then when you click off, it creates your slug for you. Then your heading usually is going to be the same as your reference name. Why not, right? Reference name is just for you to know. Should it show the heading or not? It's up to you. In the sidebar, should it show the heading? Then what kind of a type is that? And it might be like the Google map, right? And then if so, what should it show? Latitude, longitude, or full address? It gives you the choice. So full address, in, in our case, we'll use tokens, city, you know, uh, comma, and then LS for long state, for example. Why? So our Google map shows the middle of town, the center of the downtown of whatever page we're pitching if we care about this. That's why we're putting it here, right? It may want me to put a latitude longitude, and if it does, a simple number will do. So like one, two, three, comma, one, two, three. It's still gonna choose the full address, but there you go. There, see? Now we'll put it down here. And I don't need it, because <laughs> I already have one up here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete that one after all. Yep. By the way, can you rearrange these things? Yes, save the sorting. That way the, the, the sidebar items will show in whatever order you wish. So we put the most popular thing at the top. Introducing Moji, guess what that is? It's a videos widget. So I have it at the top so it can show off what we're all about in a video and I want people to see it right away, okay? Now, I might enable that because so far it's not enabled, is it? Let's take a look at our page again. See? We've got just those three enabled, popular services, satisfaction, visa. That is those three, popular services, satisfaction, credit cards, right? If I enable this one, then any page that said show all, whoops, hit it again. All right, any page that said show all, the, the, the sidebar items will now show that, like our homepage, see that? We now have a video in here. Somebody can hit the wording and it'll open it on YouTube. But there it is, right? Starts to explain what's going on right away. Okay. Anyway, so there's our video. You can do whatever video you want, obviously. create Again, to create the video, just click on it. Follow the simple instructions. What should it say? Creates a slug. Show the heading, yes or no. Videos from YouTube or Vimeo. And what's the video ID? And it gives you a simple example so you can recognize video ID when you see it, right? It's not hard. Okay, and then you can give it a description. And you can even do things like put in your own little break tags if you want to create some extra space down at the bottom, like I did there, okay? So it's up to you. But boom. Now, can you create a bunch of um, video slugs and line them up and use them for different purposes? Flip different ones on and off on the pages? Yeah, so each page shows its own video for that page. So if I had a page for automotive locksmith, another one for residential locksmith, I could enable the automotive locksmith video on the automotive locksmith page and the residential video on the residential page, right? How do you do that? Well, 
Now that I've figured out everything I wanted with my sidebars, I go back, just uh, I can flip them on. I can flip on the serving your area. I can flip on the uh, call now. I could flip on the contact form. And just to show you how much power that gives, okay, for any pages that include any of those, we got our video, popular services, satisfaction, credit cards, serving your area, and it's showing our area, downtown Phoenix, live map, by the way. Call now, right? There's a phone number. Somebody on a mobile phone can call it right away. Contact form, want to fill it in? It'll send to the email that you put in the email <laughs> section of the global variables, okay? Scroll back up to the top of the page, right? I've got my links here. I've got my translate toolbar here. And it'll translate everything, all right? Now, whatever it is, <laughs> literally gets translated right then and there. This is pretty cool, right? And I can go ahead and show the original. Okay, there you go. There's that. By the way, can you actually create pages for the different languages into your sitemap? Yeah. For those of you that understand the coding or look it up, you can see how to do that. It's really, really awesome. Okay, let me come back to this. On pages, I'm gonna dry, I'm gonna put these two things together. Our sidebar lets us know what's possible with the sidebar, and then we determine what's allowed on the pages. So if we show the sidebar, it's yes or no. And if we do, we can choose our widgets, either all, which is everyone's choice, or you can either control click. So hold down the control button and just click the ones you want. Whoops. Like that. Or you can do a shift click and then you can add one in with the control button or not, right? Whatever you want, you can even control something off, right? And then just save your changes, right? And then that way you're deciding which widgets show on which pages, like the automotive locksmith one on the automotive locksmith page, residential one on the residential page. So yeah, how many sidebar items can you create? 100, 200, and then just choose the ones you want page by page, okay? How many pages can you make? 100, 150, you can make any number of pages for any reasons you want, it's up to you. Then when you export the project, it will export all of your pages with all of your submenus, with all of your sidebar options set for every page, with perfect HTML validation, page speed maximized, and everything else, okay? So that's how much control you have. It's really insane, okay? Um, playing with it is gonna help you with a lot of this. Now, real quick, email, module settings. I'm gonna show you, we have videos module, image gallery. You can sort of explore those and you'll see how they work. It's not hard to understand. Contact us can go in the sidebar, but you can also have a contact us down here. Testimonials, header schedule form. Let me show you the difference. Contact us in the sidebar. There's nothing really to say. It's just, you know, your email. It's going to use your email address for that send. Whatever you put in your global variables for email, right? So whatever I have for email in here, which is going to be in here somewhere, okay? Wherever I put it, I don't know. I, I'd have to look again. Uh, but wherever it is, that's exactly the point. It's going to use that email for the send, okay? Which is great because if you do a main run and you're switching between emails from uh, subdomain to subdomain to subdomain. Like the first hundred belong to one client, the next hundred you want the contact form to work for a different client. Perfect, because it'll use the first guy's email for the first hundred, the next guy's email for the next hundred, right? Everything operates independently. You could make this same contact form work for 10,000 different email addresses, literally one per subdomain if you really want. Now, it's gonna send two emails. <laughs> it's giving you sending success, fail, uh, when it sends, it's going to send one to you to let you know that this username with that email address contacted you with that information. You know, and if there is a source, it'll use it. And it'll say it's from the team, okay? You, and you can adjust this verbiage. You can change everything it's saying here that it would send to you. Now, this is the one it actually sends the person thanking them for contacting you. Letting them know that you got it. And you'll get back to them soon. So thank you. Should say thank you, not thank you, or for contacting us at website. Okay. 
Thank you for contacting us. Our team has received your email. We will respond to you as soon as possible. Thank you for your support and whatever it says to them. That's totally up to you. You can give them links to videos to watch in the meantime or a link to a support form or knowledge base to look things up while they wait. Whatever you want. I'm going to go ahead and update that little change I made there. All right. Now, uh, something to keep in mind about the main contact us form because it's similar except it does a little bit more. It needs a secret key and a data site key for reCAPTCHA, okay? If you hover over this arrow, you can go to reCAPTCHA, sign into Google, and set up your keys. And you can either paste in your keys or, again, global variables. Now, you might just paste in keys if you're doing a whole big project for yourself, you know, for, for whoever. It doesn't matter what the email address is. The key is going to be the same, right? Um so that that's fine i just happen to put them there to keep it on the var sheet so it's all obvious to everybody right and that way it's just you know people don't forget about this right that this does exist in the system okay um there's more i mean we could go through the videos module what's that do that says how many videos per row whenever you're invoking videos on pages and how do you do that with modules Obviously, you're going to want to ask. Let me just show you a concept. On Moji at the bottom of the main page, maybe I could put a contact us down here. I don't really see a point because I've got one here. Uh, I could put a link to reviews down here. I could um, invoke videos down here at three per row or whatever. That's what that's all about. So let me just show you this real quick. On home, you already understand about sidebar widgets. And you already understand about the main part of the page. And if you want to add an image from scratch, that's what this is for, to add an image. Just put your cursor basically where you would want the image to go. You know, usually like top right and then lower left. And then hit add image. And you can therefore put an image there and create some horizontal and vertical spacing. And align it to the right so that the words will wrap around it nicely. Okay. But say at the very bottom... I really did want to go ahead and add a module. Well, that would be like videos module, image module, contact us module, testimonials. How do you do it? Well, you do two parts. One, you do the part itself this way. Use the curly brackets this time. For modules, you need curly brackets, not tokens, curly brackets. Contact us happens to be contact us and then the ending curly bracket okay now it's not enough just to put that there because the system might think that's wording you wanted to use on the page but if you also hit contact us down here then it knows better it knows to look for this and treat it like a module by the way can you put more than one module in and then highlight more modules yes so i could do something like um I think testimonials is this. Testimonials. It's funny. We get this stuff pre-programmed into the system and we almost forget what the wording is. Just kind of like test some things out and you'll find it. Okay. By the way, can we put things like, you know, a horizontal bar in between these? And the answer is, yeah, you can put a horizontal bar there. Put a horizontal bar there. <laughs> you know, and whether the bar is visible just depends on your styling for the coding. So if I went to, now that I selected both of those and have both of those in, I can update and reload because I'm not sure if I got it right. So I'm going to stay on the page until I know I got it right. But let me come back and just double check. Yep, take a look at that. It added the reviews right there from my testimonial section with any global variables I added, which is great because you can make global variable reviews for different cities, states, names, different verbiage uh, for what they say. So your pages don't all say the same thing. It just happens to say the same thing here because I didn't mess with it. But you can go change the testimonials. Where? Right there. Testimonials. And you can go edit testimonials. You can enable or disable testimonials. You can determine addresses or use global variables even for everything here. Okay? Okay. So that's awesome. And you can add new ones and you can sort them your own way to get older ones at the bottom, newer ones at the top, whatever you want to do. Okay. And then what? 
Then it added the contact us uh, form down here. And so I could use it if I wanted, right? Isn't that pretty cool? It does that right then and there. So that much control you have immediately. Whether you're showing things geographically, you can stick in geo targets, you know, global variables into titles like header, header one or header two or header three. Anywhere you want, it's up to you. Uh, it's just very flexible, right? So now that we said that anyway, uh, let's actually do the work of the rest of it. So I think by now you basically get the panel. The images gallery is where you set up uh, different, you know, tokenized items if you want for descriptions, for links, for image paths. You can go look and see how that works. Obviously, the galleries go with the categories, okay? So you assign, you create categories, music equipment, music events, and click in one. Sure enough, it's just setting the widget. There it is, a page. And then that way, when you go to the gallery, you just decide which category it belongs to out of your categories, right? So that it'll switch between them, okay? That way you can do... I think it's just images gallery on the page, right? So I could put that on the same page or a different page. See how it's showing me my modules so I don't lose track. Maybe if I go here and I come down and maybe I want to put it higher, low. It doesn't matter where you put it. I'll put it at the bottom, but it could be anywhere. It could be up here. Maybe I'll just stick it here, right? That way you can do smiling faces and stuff, right? Image gallery, I think that's it. Again, I can do something like my horizontal roll, okay? This will affect all of your pages, by the way, which is totally awesome. Your subdomains and everything, okay? So this is just incredibly cool. So now I'm going to click on that, and I'm going to update and reload, see if I got that thing right, okay? Moji review. Yeah, show all music equipment and music events. I can The images will move around depending on whatever's going on. You're not seeing any images right now. Why? Because the image links I have are not real. That's all. They're not actually pointing at anything. Uh, so gallery, right? I would have to update these because this doesn't exist any longer. The file slash music1.jpg is not here on, on this particular theme. I would need to update this to actually use a real image. It wouldn't be that one. Okay. It would just be something else like inner pages or gallery or you know, quote list or kind of support or service boxes, satisfy, whatever it is that was want to use. By the way, this is a drag and drop box. Anywhere you go in here, take your images and just drag them and let them go. If you want to do files, that's like for movies, you drag that and let it go. Uh, images will go anywhere, right? So... That's easy. You just drag and drop your images. If you highlight 50 images over here and drag and drop them, they'll all go whip, 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 whip. Don't worry about this bit about demo version of CK Finder. Please visit the website to obtain a valid license. That's ours, the whole thing. So it's never going to stop you. It's always going to let you do whatever you want to do. All right. Yeah, so okay. Okay, so you're starting to get how this works. It's really pretty simple. It's just time. you can use variables anywhere and you can put anything anywhere and make it variable. Now, themes, we'll cover themes later, but it's awesome. You can select a theme, duplicate it, switch by activating a different theme. Then when you go to the front page of the website, it's the other one and you can change that one. So you can make it different images, different fonts, different colors. And guess what? Your runs can use those different themes in the run. So this one might be for real estate. The next one might be for some program. The next one that you create might be for some other purpose. How many times can you duplicate and make new themes and, and flip between them in your sitemaps? A hundred. If you want to make a hundred themes and just activate whichever theme you want to work on at one time, go for it. Nothing stops you. And then they all become your resources. That also means for guys doing uh, real estate, you can do themes that work best for the Pacific Northwest, themes that work best for Miami, Florida, themes that work best for the Midwest, like Chicago. And that way your run is you're switching your uh, states. 
you're using the appropriate theme each time. So you get palm trees where they should be, fir trees where they should be, concrete buildings where they should be, <laughs> all that kind of thing. How do themes work? The first theme is number zero. When you go activating a bunch more, they become one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way to your max themes. Um, we've put as many as 150 in a panel. Uh, there really is no limit. If you were to create a thousand, the system will let you. All right, with this has been an hour. Uh, we've covered most of the stuff at one time or another. Site admin just means change your password. That's it, that's all it means, okay? There's some other things to learn, but for, for most people's purposes, this is really enough to understand how much control you really have, right? If you wanna do geo-targeted runs, just throw on your Google Maps. And by the way, there's Google Maps up in here as well. Go to theme settings, scroll down. Learn what all your sections do if you enable them. There are many sections here that are disabled, a few that are enabled, many that are not. You should flip them on and see what they do. And you should see how you can arrange the boxes for them and things. And you can add more, you can subtract sections. You can just add a new one or subtract it. Okay, and decide how many show up, one, two, three, in a single row, or two, or four, or six, okay. Logo section style, you want it on or off. And if you want logos, you can even link out. This gives you an excuse to create a bunch of outgoing links to different places on purpose, like membership sites, affiliation sites, um, anywhere you want to link out to. Right, so that you can create variations there. It's cool because look at the, the control that you would have with the variables. They're at the ready. This whole thing's been pre-set up. If you wanted to add them into your um, global variables and run it, you could do it. Just browse, hit any browse button to open the CK editor. Go to any folder you want. If you don't really know where you wanna, if you, you see all these and you wanna create some new folder, just right click and hit new subfolder. By the way, see download a zip. Yep, you can download a whole folder to your desktop and upload and and then extract it and then pull it into some other panel if you want to like use the same images in a different panel. It's really a breeze. You can recreate everything from one panel to the next. It's really awesome. Okay, um, you can take images and you can copy them. Like I could be here bullets. I could take this one. I could say copy to the about bullets and it'll be copied in there. It's in there. And I could take one and I could delete it if I don't have a use for it. Or I could download it or view it or resize it. When you resize, you can even give it a different size. You could say like 150. <laughs> um, it won't let you do that in this case because it won't go higher than that image was. I'd have to go smaller. But I can create a new image and it will give it a new name and that way I'll have a second image now that's resized. So I could use the resized version for whatever the purpose is. Or if I don't want them anymore, I'll just control click them or shift click and delete them. Download, delete, you know, whatever you want to do. Okay. So this whole editor is drag and drop worthy and it's really easy to use. Just double click on the one you want for any spot in the whole system. Down here, the form section, you can flip it on. And that way you can turn on company information. You can turn on the, the co company contact us form. You can turn on the Google map and you can do it in any combinations. It will use the space appropriately. If you turn the other ones off, the map will grow larger to fill the space. If you have a map image, you can control the height in pixels. If you have a pin, you can use the pin. We have a couple of pins for you. Um, a Google map API key. Everybody usually needs that. We've got that in the global variables for you right now so that your Google map works right away. Okay. Uh, full address. Okay. There it is. And, uh, that way it'll show the city and the state on the Google map. Okay. And if you wanted to show the rest of the stuff like company, mailing address, um, alternate or I'm sorry address line two would be like city state zip in this case phone heading phone number maybe the email but why would you need the email if you've got the contact form enabled right 
So whatever combinations you flip on or off, it'll store that information and save it and use what you want. Okay. Pre-footer, do you want to enable it or not? And if you do enable it, how many pre-footers do you want next to each other? <laughs> one, two, three, four. And you can create one, two, three, four. You can decide just how many you want or delete. So you can have one pre-footer that floats in the middle nicely or wherever it should go, left, center, right for the header. Or if you put two, then it'll fill the space one and two really nicely. So you could really go three or four. And you could have some of these with just lists of links to click on, you know, throughout your site. So you have all this control. It's really insane. It doesn't matter what you change it to if it's disabled, obviously. Okay. Footer settings. Do you want the footer on or off? Do you want there to be a copy of the top menu in the footer, like a footer menu? It's up to you. And back to the top buttons. It says back top top. It should be back to top. Do you want it to be enabled or not? And remember, don't bother with this. Okay, just update theme settings. And also, if you want to control the styling of any of these things, the footer, the map, the pre-footer, all of these sections, you do that on the other tab, right? Typography. If I were to scroll to the bottom, you'll see it right away. That's for the back to the top button. That's for the footer. This is for the pre-footer, right? They match up. They line right up. Sidebars in here somewhere. It's probably, oh, that's the map section. Yeah, it's big because there are a lot of options for that. Then above it, sidebar style, logo section. See the point for all these controls? Change any one control and you've got a unique template. Google sees it as a different template. Change any color. Change any font. Now, granted, that's just one change. It's not that market. But you can change anything. You can flip things left, center, right, change fonts, change colors in any combinations. You can make drop shadows match the main shadow or not. You can control the appearance so much that you can make all these different site combinations out of your templates. Okay? Boxed, fluid, in any combination. Do them any way you want. Okay? So there are a couple more features here. We'll cover that in the next video. I'll go ahead and give you a break from this one. Uh, you've earned a lot. You've learned a lot. We're going to talk about the fun stuff next. This themes, Varshi Loader, and the value of downloading and importing feed files. Those right there will help really expand your mind across all the rest of the possibilities, including how you export totally unique websites Okay, in the process. This, I think you're going to love. All right.